Welcome to Southie Sessions, a podcast presented by Allison South Marketing and hosted by me, Emily Ann Lively. Here at Allison South, we ring a cowbell to celebrate our successes, whether big or small. On this show, we'll be celebrating successes with ink slingers, idea bringers, scribblers and strategists from the Augusta area and beyond. We'll get to hear their started from the kitchen table stories and learn why they ring the cowbell. Hi, and welcome to the first ever episode of Southie Sessions. I'm sitting here with the original Southie himself, kind of, Mike Thomas. Is that the OG? I guess. Where's my bell to ring? You can be, I don't have it. It's just a theoretical bell. I'm ringing it. Okay, first so. One. I mean, this is your first one. <laughs> I know, you should I know. ring a bell. I know. Maybe we can add a sound effect later. David, get um, on that. I am Emily Ann Lively. I am the host of Southie Sessions podcast. I am also an account manager here. Uh, I've been here. A little over a year, almost a year and a half now. You made it through. You made it through COVID. I know. I know. Crazy. So I'm happy to be here and get started on this new venture for me and for Allison South. It's our first ever podcast. Well, by us. And I guess about us. And you picked me before Kate. Yes. That's so (laughs) awesome. I did. Don't watch this episode, Kate. Oh my gosh. So. The point and the gist of this podcast is really to hear from not only our clients, but people in the CSRA and surrounding communities, kind of hear their started from the kitchen table stories, their origin stories, if you will, and also hear kind of, you know, what what makes them tick and what keeps them going, aka what um, why they ring the cowbell. So today we wanted to start with Mike Thomas, our CEO here at Allison South, and kind of hear his origin story and what he rings the cowbell for. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for, for letting me. me do this. Yes. Um, so to kind of tell us, so you've been a Southie, which is what we call our employees here. Absolutely. Um, since 2010, Correct. technically. But what kind of led up to you being here? Absolutely. I, th- I always call it uh, going through God's door. So okay. trying to figure out the path of life. Sure. Um, so my background's always been in marketing or radio or television, even though I'm uh, scared of a microphone. So I sold uh, radio when I was in college and uh, actually had a teen radio show, which was a lot of fun. So organ- organizing, it was called Teen Forum Show. Okay. And then as the teenagers grew up, we had to become Your New Nation was our t- name. So okay. Do you have pictures of that? I, like of that time? I do. You yeah. have to send me those I will. for the gram. Um, for this, we'll put just add to this gram. podcast. Yes, for, please. I love it. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I, I worked with a bunch of young people for about 10 years, uh, College was my first experiment doing that radio show. So and so college was USC. Yeah, from okay. 2000 to 2005, because nobody can graduate in four years unless you're smart. So I did. Well, <laughs> that's why I don't you're. Know if I'm smart. That's why you're hosting lame. this podcast <laughs> show. <lame>. That's right. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So, hence your background and your love of media buying is that kind of where that came from uh i grew up in radio just in that sense my father my grandfather and then myself got to have that show so that was pretty awesome um i love just watching getting clients messages out there telling their story so right i think that started early i mean at that age at 18 to 20 something like you don't really know what you're doing but there's a reason why it's happening yeah i'm like Um, when does that transition because i feel like i'm still kind of in that phase yeah (laughs) but like it's like you know, you look and look for the doors and the signs and you, and you walk through it. So like if I didn't go to do that radio show in the early ages of college and again, it wasn't like I was getting paid. It was a, just a internship type thing, uh, maybe a couple hours a week and uh, just grew it um, and got it on 23 radio stations, actually. What? Yeah. That's crazy. So we stayed up at night and we syndicated, made up uh, the disc and copied them and then mailed them out to the station so they could run them over the weekend. That's cool. So, yeah. So, a uh, bunch of wonderful young people from USC and different high schools, we put that together every week. Wow. And then that door led to Global Spectrum, which led to here. So, uh, Global Spectrum brought me to Aiken, South Carolina, wow. which I never understood what was that city before this. And <laughs> um, figured out that I can't commute from Columbia to Aiken every day of my life or I'd run off the road. Mm-hmm. And I gave in and moved. And now I'm in Augusta, Georgia at a podcast studio. So, right. That's like, pretty cool. And I, kinda, I guess we got a pretty big company. That's what they say. Yeah. So then why do you say you started from the kitchen table? Where does that come so, from? So in 2009, I'm at Global Spectrum and I run into one of our uh, sponsorship clients of the building, Edward Chandler. And uh, Mr. Chandler with the Chandler Law. Still a client. Still a client today. 12 years later, asked me to uh, do his marketing off to the side. So 
uh, many late nights on the kitchen table after my nine to five and side hustle. And for, you know, two, three, four years, it was probably more of just a, an idea that uh, formed and eventually had some people to help with it. So, wow. And then I wish I kept the table. I know Haley, you should, you should talk to Haley about that. So the table was at your house or apartment at the time. Uh, yeah. Like my little two of. bedroom, whatever. And yeah, that's awesome. Like looking back on that, that was, you ever me- think you would be like your company would be the, where it is now. Um, I don't think you ever like vision that big at that early of stage. I think right. you just work to know that you're doing something cool or great or wonderful and it's better than, um, or it's maybe meant to what you're supposed to be doing. Like it's on that right Right. path. So, or not even just in Aiken, like you expanded to Augusta and I mean, now we're in Chattanooga in Florida. I mean, it's crazy how much you've grown over a short period of time and we have what 50, 50 employees around there. Yeah. And a dog. That's crazy. And a dog. (laughs) And a dog. So, uh, yes. So, yeah, I mean, and I think in the last two years, it's really kind of come about, like, what the vision is. And now I can see it every day. Right. But at that early stage, I think you just, you work, and then you figure out what's improving and and continuing to better yourself. Right. Um, Okay, so, you know, obviously I mentioned the cowbell earlier, and we have a cowbell in our Southeast Sessions logo. But where did the um, more cowbell come from? I I mean, we all know. (laughs) I'm like, are you ringing the bell right now? Um, We all, I'm sure most people are familiar with that famous or infamous SNL skit with the more cowbell. Yeah. But why is that the kind of our slogan? Where did that come from? So in 2007, I was at a chamber of commerce meeting in Aiken, South Carolina, and Jim Anderson was the speaker and a good friend of mine. And he had a whole presentation around the cowbell. Really? And I never knew that. Yeah. So um, he kind of shared his story with 200 chamber members about using it as a uh, way to highlight great things that are happening. And then when the bell happens that you basically got more cowbell in you and things are, you know, achieving and great things in success or highlighting things. So we just, I kind of always remembered his speech from 2007. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think the cowbell really took into fruition until like 2015. But, wow. but then I, I mean, think that, beca- and that, yeah, but then I think it became a thing of like, now if we did something good, we'd have more cowbell. Mm-hmm. Um, or at uh, Global Spectrum, they used to have the Cocky Award because we were part of the University of South Carolina. Right. So if Cocky was on your desk the next day, the company knew that somebody did highlight at you or put your name in the hat or whatever. Right. And now you had the Cocky Award on your desk. But we really use it for anything. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter how big or how small. Or we don't use it to, to highlight just one person, but a cowbell could be wrong at any moment. Right. And I think that's what life's all about. Like, instead of going home every day and going, what didn't go right, ring the cowbell for what did. Right. Well, speaking of what didn't go right, when you when you look back over your career over, I guess, the last decade or so, um, is there any sort of I wasn't going to say you said it. Um, Yeah, you're 10 years older than me. There you go. Um, I was going to say, is there any sort of failure that kind of sticks out to you? Like one specific thing that kind of catapulted, you know, a reaction into success or growth or was there anything like a big failure in your life? Um, I think every day there's one. So it's just it's just figuring out what it is and how to make it better. Right. And learn from it. Especially um, in our industry. Ours it's is always crazy. something. I mean, we're judged by, you know, the success of a campaign. We're judged by the brand and the, the public perception. We're judged by every day by our peers or Time our teammates or whatever. Or, yeah, deadlines right. and everything. So um, I don't think there's one specific. It's just I think everyone has to realize that they're going to have them. Right. And, and then, then how to get over that and, and yeah. how to not focus on it. Yeah, and mine are a lot larger now from an investment standpoint at this point. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, a lot scarier. Before it was you had no money and you just tried it and hoped for the best. And the worst right. outcome could be that you, you know, spent more hours on something you should have. Right. Now, now it's different. But, um, yeah, I think it, but not doing it would be worse, too. Mm hmm. Okay, if Allison South, as a whole, could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? All right, I got it. Okay, I'm ready. All right. The suspense. Well, I had to do that. <laughs> no, I, I truly want everybody to come in here and better themselves and build themselves, whether it's in their career or as an individual, or if they can figure out a way to grow the company and be part of it more. You've said before, you said it to me, you said it to our whole staff that that's something that you feel like you're really passionate about and you're good at. I mean, I feel like you're good at finding people's strengths and kind of putting them in the right spot. Would you say that's that's true? That's all I'm good at. 
Okay, that is not that is not what I was saying. But no, I do like no, I do enjoy that. That's like my favorite part to watch. People find what they're supposed to be doing in life and kind of push them towards that. Yeah, and I think that's important, especially in the role that you're in in a company, being able to kind of spot someone's talent and say, "I think you'd be really good here." Yeah, I think you'd do better here, but you have to trust me. I'm sure, you get some pushback every now and then. It's all worked out. Yeah, so far. it's worked out so far. Fingers there crossed. Okay, um, when you think back to any job that you've had. Like when you were a teenager, it doesn't matter. What's the, what's your favorite job you've ever had? Mm. It could be something small. Like I worked at a fireworks stand. I mean, I that worked, I worked at Radio Shack. You worked at Radio Shack? I was stock boy. Really? My father made me. That's hilarious. He said, you're 15 now. When I worked at, at 15, I had to go work at, it was called Lafayette back then, but, okay. and now it's called Radio yeah. Shack, or it's not even called anything anymore. Right. But I'm like, are, do those still I exist? Th- I think there's probably like one. It's probably like the last, it's probably like the last blockbuster that's in wherever. Right. But, um, yeah, no, my father helped me get the job because they don't hire 15 year olds. Right. And, uh, it was great. I mean, I was stock boy. I ate my Asian food next door every day. That's amazing. I learned everything about electronics and uh eventually learned how to sell cell phones that's amazing so i think i mean at a young age it taught me a lot yeah. um i mean i know what a nokia flip phone was and the 3200 series phone or how whatever far we've come i'll in tell this short period of time. back in the day i'll tell i'll wow. tell yeah that's crazy okay what about your least favorite um probably the same one <laughs> <laughs> i mean you had to work christmas and stuff no, i think uh, my least favorite was working at my dad's company Okay. Like over the summer Does he know? when I was like 15 and 16. I mean, oh, my dad, absolutely. My dad fired me probably three times. So It was not. Oh, really? Yeah. For what? I'm probably talking back or something. <laughs> that sounds on brand. Yeah. That yeah. sounds it's on brand. Tr- I mean, this is a true. <laughs> this is podcasting. We're supposed to tell the truth. Why lie? That's hilarious. Okay. So if you could go back and give your. But eight, you can't, what? I was going to say, I, I mean, I, no, my bad. I just was like, I haven't had that many jobs to think of. If I really think about it, like radio. Because sh- you were in, you were Radio Shack and then the Ca- radio. Then the radio. Then the radio show. I mean, I went from Radio Shack to a radio show. So you didn't really have a ton of random odd jobs. Like you've never worked in food and beverage. Look, look at loyalty and dedication. I'll give it like, so Radio Shack. Okay, that's true. But no years. food and beverage? No, no. I wouldn't even know what to that's do. That's kind of shocking. Yeah. Like bus tables or anything. Yeah. I did, uh, I did. 10 years technically of that radio show, but let's just say four were during college or five. And uh, I then did Global Spectrum for multiple years, I think like four and, or five. And then here. And then here for a decade plus. Okay, that's wild. Yeah, so I only had like four jobs. I feel like it's definitely more. I don't even think I'm out of yard in my life. I need to go back and look. Okay, we've got some things you need to work no, out. I'm like, to go you hang need out. to go clean the dishes that are up in the account manager's office. Um, Okay, well, if you could go back and give your 18-year-old self... Advice? Advice. That's, that's great. I didn't I, know you were going that direction. Oh, I'm, we're going there. We're okay. going that deep right now. What would it be? Hmm. I feel like 18 is such an interesting time. Like, age. maybe even, like, Do 22. not date that girl. No, I'm just <laughs> Honestly, that would be mine for myself. <laughs> At 18. Don't date that guy. Oh. Um, or even 22, like, when you graduated college. Any time in there. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm pro- I, That's a hard question. It is hard. Um, I, I actually, I don't think I'd change a thing. I mean, I learned a lot about uh, money mm-hmm. better. I mean, like managing money. Um, with that radio show, I actually had to put up money so to keep it going after my college really? project. So I put up over ten thousand. Okay. So my, I would teach my younger self not to take a credit card out and put something on it mm-hmm. and, and then go in debt without a plan. So, right. and then when I did have the money, cause I mean, eventually I did at least have more than $10,000 to pay it off. I taught myself by just making the monthly payments because mm-hmm. that way I wanted to remember writing that check. So I wrote checks for five years after that. What? Easily five years. Um, you know, I don't even bat, own whatever. a checkbook. Really? I don't own a checkbook. I still love checkbooks. Um, so yeah, I wrote that check for five years at whatever hundred and something dollars plus interest every month. So it would remind me of that mistake I made. Hmm. And then, you know, I paid it off, even though I could have paid it off probably by year two or three. Right. Surely. But I feel like you're a budget king. Like you're very particular about dollars I, and I'm a Dave Ramsey fool. Yeah. Dave Ramsey? Big Tom. So would you, would you tell people to go through the program? I would tell people You tell us to do I, it. I do. I tell you I'd pay for y'all to go through it. So yeah, of course. I think um it just did I mean, maybe not all his approaches are correct, but mm-hmm. like in life, I think having that balance of budgeting is mm-hmm. key. Right. 
And I, I learned a lot, a lot of that from my mom, actually. So from your mom, she has a drawer in her kitchen. I, I don't know if it's still there. I'm assuming it is, but you just pull it out and there's envelopes and in each envelope has um, a money for Christmas or birthday Smart. or bread or I mean, it's ridiculously how many envelopes there are probably in there. But if there was no money in the envelope, then you couldn't do whatever was on that envelope. Wow. So I just do that the same way with savings accounts. Mm -hmm. I've got like 14 savings accounts all named different things. What? Yeah. So my kid's got a savings account. So right. if she wants something that's coming out of that savings account. That's and cool. And if there's nothing in that savings account, then she's not getting <laughs> she's it. She's screwed. She's done. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I do it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, Thinking back again, tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they impacted Where you. Where did you get three Professional, from? Professional. I don't know. Three feels right, you know? Okay. Or you can, I mean, you could say one, two. I yeah, will, I will, right. I will put the young people like yourself into a category. What? The Davids, like the, the world. I feel like you're saying that because David and I are right here. No, I mean the James, the who, I mean, I put the people that, that in, like are influential in your life. Yeah. Y'all, y'all mo motivate me. Why? Do we, do we just keep you young? <laughs> yeah, sure. That's one. We I tell was, you all the I'm TikTok trying, trends. Yeah, I'm trying to be cool. Um, no, just watching young people with an idea and see them go after it uh, inspires me to continue to do what I do. Yeah. So that's one. Okay, cool. Uh, my mom from a savings, life lesson, loyalty, being there for everything, whatever it takes mindset would mm -hmm. be two. Uh, my father who taught me broadcasting, um, taught me the business, taught me things that were good and bad about business, um, and got me into a career path that I never would have gotten into without being nudged. Three. And then my stepmom, Cynthia, who has always been there from the start, too. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think your parents have a... I had a good upbringing, even though it was a divorce family or whatever it's supposed right. to be. like. But you can still learn from any sort of scenario, no matter what. I mean, I grew up Monday through Thursday eating corn dog, french fries, and applesauce, if we were lucky. And that was like our single mom lifestyle meal. Um, I'm sure it was a little bit better than that, but I just remember the calendar in the kitchen. There was always a calendar. Like, there's a school calendar, but it was our dinner calendar. And really? It, yeah, she did the whole month. She so planned them out. Because of budget. That's smart. Yeah, so she knew how much exactly she could spend right. on food for the, and then the, if I'm wrong, mom, you can not call in because it's not live. Um, <laughs> Fridays was go eat at your friend's house because that way she could save, I'm sure, $5 mm -hmm. or $10. And right. then Saturday was $20 bill. You pick between Hardee's or uh, whatever pizza place, I'm sure. Wow, so I that, love that. That was my life. And so, and then when I went to my father's house um, for the weekends, so we got to go out and enjoy a really cool lifestyle of him being a broadcaster and having the opportunity to eat with chefs hmm. and be able to talk it up on the radio shows that he had. So he was a personality, oh, like yeah. a radio personality. He was a news talk show host for, I don't know, 20-something plus years easily, 25 that's, years. That's cool. So you never wanted to like... Be in that. Do that? I always thought my brother and I were like, we're going to have a sports show one day. But I guess I just got the God to be behind the scenes. So, yeah. I mean, this is kind of nerve wracking. It's really, it's not. I mean, I guess I could see how it is for you, for but me, we know. have different personalities. I mean, you know, goal of mine would be to learn how to public speak more. So that would be, so mm -hmm. this is partially towards that way. Yes. Well, you mentioned Cynthia, so you have to talk about Cynthia. So, uh, yeah, she's been a part of my life since the Cynthia 90s. South. Cynthia South, uh, early 90s, uh, became my stepmom and uh, an awesome woman and marketing person. So she obviously had an influence on me. Um, also a tennis star at one point in her life. So that helped too <laughs> uh, for high school to get through tennis. Um, but yeah, just over the years, just always there for me. And then in 2009, when Mr. Chandler came to us about doing this, uh, doing this um, South company uh, or ad agency or doing his marketing, she came together to help out and uh, was there for me ever since. So That's crazy. That's you know, one day small... she came to one meeting and next thing you know, she's driving every week from Columbia to help me. So, And she's here and she's a part of it now. She's a big part of it. She's. Yeah. I feel like she's an untapped mentor. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I, w I feel like we need to really get into a mentor program here. Because yeah, be Lisa awesome. Mayo and I talked about it too, about how important having mentors is. And I know we technically have one when we start. Yeah, yeah. But we, I think we need to dive into that more here. So you're taking the lead. I don't know if I'm volunteering myself on that, but I think we told? should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. In. Done. Exactly. But I think she'd be a good one for people to kind of, you know, suck up all from I mean, knowledge. she graduated freaking high school and college so freaking early. So Gosh. I think she was like. And Mark Allison too. I wish, I yeah. wish he was around more that I could call and it not be weird. 
Hey, Mark, tell me some more stories. No, nah, but the caliber of people that are in here every day, it's amazing. So it's, it's pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm excited as we continue this podcast series to bring people in as guest hosts or, you know, I need to interview Kate. I need to interview Cynthia, but I mean, episode definitely want to hear. Something. Yeah. I mean, later, later. <laughs> after okay. this, after the, you There's know, excitement so cool of this people. one settles so. down. <laughs> okay. Um, what's been, or what is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now? And it could be personal. I mean, act, no, don't be personal. Um, in uh, the business and how you're tackling it. Um, was th- it COVID really? Like, do you think that, I mean, that was obviously like a huge I, obstacle. I, I to think tackle. COVID uh, helped frame more of where we need to go. Right. And I think it created more fear than it needed to. But, but you hired people during COVID. We, doubled so i guess that is wild so i think the challenge is really then just how do you all operate with more people than uh you had a year and a half ago so more people and more, companies. And more clients yeah and clients and companies okay so so when really you say companies, three layers can you elaborate for the listeners what companies yeah are you so kate to? and myself are partners with multiple companies from podcasting to uh podcasting to video to digital to all different entities we so really are full circle i mean we, we really have are full circle all so. the things absolutely i feel like maybe for people who are already familiar with allison south don't really know that we have all of that to offer i mean heck i'm trying to buy a southie house by the end of the year that is crazy i mean this is what is this like the real world like brother, allison yeah, south yeah, like, that's gonna be great <laughs> i mean can, can we rent it out show like, from there yeah <laughs> Let's get lit in the um, Allison South house. But I mean, I think the model proves to be that eventually a lot of different places, you can be in multiple places, but still have a central hub. Mm-hmm. So and this, as long, as, long, as, long the as the central hub. hub is strong with great talent. Well, knock on wood. There's there. I hope so. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we do have to ask you. This is like the. The end. This is the end. This is the end. Okay. Um, We have to ask you what you ring the cowbell for because we ask everybody. We want to ask everybody what, and this could be in your life. This could be about Allison South. This could be about today. It could be anything. Like what, what are you ringing the cowbell for today? Today, this moment? Yeah, right now on air for everyone. The magic. The the bell that Mike so badly wants to ring right now. (laughs) Um, Today, um, Personally, hearing my daughter's voice in the morning and her excitement and joy of life. Anders is so cute. Adorable. How old is Anders? Uh, almost six. Wow. Yeah. And she has a business. We don't she, have to get into that, I mean, but she does have a little a business. a little something. Yeah. She's a We can negative, put that on the gram, too. She's a negative 200 in the bank, but we're good. <laughs> um, she's fine. She'll get a P&L. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I think personally that definitely just to hear her in the morning and the excitement and the joy to know that's what you're kind of working towards mm-hmm. um, to be able to spend time with her. And then from a business side, uh, watching the leadership team uh, step up with some action items today was awesome. That's great. You yeah. had a great internal meeting. That's awesome. internal meeting. So, well, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, you for, for telling your story. This, Absolutely. It's so much fun. Yeah. And I'm excited to continue to interview people and, you know, not just clients, but people in the community who are doing awesome things. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks for being here. My first selfie session. You killed it. High five. All right. Sweet.